What's up, Capstone family? This is Ed Drummond coming at you on this Friday, July the 22nd. Hope you're having an amazing week. Uh, trying something new this week with the videos. Uh, looking forward to getting your reaction and what you think from it. But one of the things that we've been talking about uh, in the 106 weeks that we've been doing this is market data and information. Uh, where I get most of my data is from a service called Crumford Reports. It's amazing. Uh, and you know, for those of you that know, um, you've seen our reports before. You've seen the graphs that we put out there. Uh, today I'm going to the source. Today I'm going to the MLS and uh, wanted to bring you in on some of the graphs and information that it's providing. Now, in the market that we're seeing right now, it's definitely shifting. It's definitely changing. And one of the things that's interesting and, and that we're looking at, and I'm looking at every week, I mean, honestly, every day I'm looking at data. And, you know, looking at the data right now, it's hard to see where we're going because the data is trailing. Um, from sales information to rentals to, to everything, um, it's hard to find accurate data that tell us and, and represent what's happening today. Uh, when it comes to the rental side of things, arguably the MLS, where Crawford Reports gets its data, is the best place for that information because it shows you what they originally listed the property for, it shows you what the list price was when it rented, and it shows you what it rented for in the amount of time. So, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty helpful in, in showing that data. What we don't know is how many rentals are, are really out there, how many rentals are really renting, how many are uh, held and not included on the MLS, and how does that affect what's happening in the market. So, hey, without further ado, want to try something new this week. Um, let me know what your thoughts are here. We've got some data. Uh, this data is what I think will help in providing a, a clear picture to what's happening. Um, I'm looking at a few different graphs here. Some of them I put together here through the MLS. Uh, this shows absorption rate for residential sales. What's happening for sales, it looks like, as you can see, uh, down here in February, March of this year, we had you know less than a month's supply. Um, you know, the lowest, or I'd say, yeah, the, the, the strongest absorption rate that we've ever had, just houses moving faster off market than they ever have, um, to, you know, growing like we have. The trends we're seeing, inventory on residential sales. Uh, we're seeing that active listings right now has exceeded new listings, right? So as we have market activity, everything changing, houses coming back on market, um, there's a lot of interesting information that this is telling us about what's really happening um, in the market. Um, as you can see, this trend for active listings that's coming up, um, you know, where that's going to, to peter out, we're not quite sure, but we know that right now, I mean, a, a lot of what we're seeing is, is fear in the market. People feeling like they're going to miss out on this time to sell their properties. Uh, whether or not that's true is hard to predict. Uh, it does seem like, you know, as, as we know, interest rates are going to be rising again. How that affects uh, ability for people to purchase, not quite sure. But one thing that for certain out here in Arizona is we still have a shortage of housing, both for rental and for sale. Inventory for residential rental, it's showing as it's coming up as well. Um, you see the numbers here. Um, let's see, let me see if I can get off of this for a second and show you residential rentals, how this has come up so far on, on the MLS. Now, one of the interesting things that happened last year is we saw this dip, which will be shown in prices for residential rental. We saw a dip last year right here as well, sale to lease price. So when, when we, last year, we saw this trend, the last three months, you all remember us talking about it. We saw this trend in rentals just like flipping petering out, like, whoa, what's going on? Why are properties sitting on the market? This is what was happening at the time. And then all of a sudden, we saw this huge uptick. So original list price ratio for residential rentals, people were, were having to get, like, this is showing discounts, people discounting because there was properties you know, too many properties on the market and a lot of people uh, decided to, to hold off or whatever that was. In this particular case, we saw a downward trajectory towards 
list price ratios for residential rentals over what was there. And we went down to, what, 97%. We went up right after the first of the year. Boom, the market hit again. We saw all kinds of interest. We felt good again. Everything was like, oh, wow, what what, what would we just go through? But now we're starting to see that trajectory again. And who's to say that we're not seeing something unique here? Um, realistically, we've got a lot of houses that are at, being added to the MLS that weren't there before. Um, we're seeing uh, days on market for residential rentals have been kind of holding steady. But the other, again, when it comes to the amount of rentals on the market, um, it seems to be going up. For a company like us, we have a lot of inventory that's currently for rent. Um, we see, like I mentioned last week, we see a lot of people looking at the market, trying to figure out, you know, what is that market going to do? Um, what are we seeing? We're not sure. Let, let's, let's see how this ends up playing out. Um, but as you look at this data, as you look at this information, look, look at this one here, the sold days on market for residential, um, we're starting to go back up again. So days on market, we had May, 26 days on market. Now we're, we're coming back up again. So we're seeing these, these trends of what's happening. How long are things sitting on the market? Some of this stuff is, is not quite as accurate market-wise as it could be. For example, when it comes to rental properties that are hitting the MLS, there is, you know, it's, it's impossible to tell if somebody starts their marketing on the day that they actually put it on the MLS or they didn't. For companies like us, we don't market everything on the MLS immediately, right? By the time it goes to the MLS, it's a luxury property, uh, we've probably already rented it, right? But now we're starting to see timelines being exceeded. We're starting to see more and more time on market. So this information is, is definitely interesting and ties into what we've been seeing with the Crawford Report, of course, uh, but also, you know, making a little more sense of this market. Is this so doom and gloom? Like, I don't necessarily see it that way. But what's interesting is what's going to happen in the next couple of months. I think for the next three months, it's going to be super telling. Does the amount of active inventory start to slow down, right? Does this inventory for residential, does it start to peter out? Or does it continue in an upward trend that just continues to go up? People are saying and the numbers are, are, are showing that we're at a, a balanced market right now. Some of the graphs that you all check out regularly show that we're at a balanced market. For some areas, we're in a buyer's market, right? And so it's hard to determine whether or not, you know, this is something that is, is going to last or it's just this little blip of figuring out how we get through this, you know, higher interest rates and make more sense of this market while people make decisions to live in different places. So cool. I appreciate you watching. Um, I, I, I definitely tried something new with this whole video thing. I spent a, spent a little bit of time trying to put this thing together. Let me tell you, the, the technology to make this stuff work is a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I, I, let me know what you think. Um, and you know, the data, I, I love being able to provide the data because I mean, it's, it's where it's at, right? Like this is the stuff that helps in making the, the best decisions. You know, I, I love looking at, okay, look at these flat lines. I love looking at, whoa, what's going on here, right? Original list price. Well, we've been overpricing our rentals for a long time. So what's, what does that mean? Is that, is that something that we need, to, we need to shy away from? We need to change up? Yes. Um, we're not getting the crazy rates that we've been looking at. We're not get, I'm not pushing the price on all of our sales anymore. We're not doing that like we were because that market is not there. It's, it's gone. Uh, people are trying to negotiate for rentals. Um, this week, I met with a couple of uh, other property management owners and uh, get to see, you know, firsthand what their experiences are as well. Uh, we stay in our lane. We have a very kind of specific niche to to what we're targeting moving forward. Uh, these other companies as well, and and seeing what they're seeing is always helpful, right? It, it it knows that we're not alone. It knows that hey, where can we be making the system and the process better? Um, and also like what's really going on out there with with our peers and you know under the the underlying message uh from all of it was just you know um more rentals hitting the market um we're seeing more people that are um waiting 
to make a decision on the rental side. For us, like I mentioned, it's we're seeing people 45, 60 days out looking at rentals when most of them would go in 30 days. So people are kind of kicking the tires and figuring that stuff out. And other companies are seeing the same thing, which is interesting. Um, so where do we go from here? I mean, it's, uh, I, I say we just stay the course, keep, keep charging, whatever your goal is. You know, for me, I'm, I'm staying the course 100%. Um, this is, this is not, a, not a change to, to the market at all for us. But I think at the end of the day, um, you know, it's definitely something we need to be paying attention to. And I hope you find this, uh, this useful. Thanks for watching.